Before we get started on this video, um, related to catch can, some catch can information, something different. Um, basically, I've got a quick question for you. Check out my playlists, right? We've got a whole heap of playlists there on our channel. Have a look, playlists. And it's kind of like the headings, it's almost like an index. It's an index of the videos. Now, not all the videos are in a playlist. So if you don't watch the videos, you may miss something. But if there's a particular subject you would like to go and look up and get information on, you go to our playlists, it's like going to the index. And for example, this morning, somewhere on Facebook, someone was asking a question about wheels and tires, how hard it is to put 33s or 35s. And I just thought, mate, what for? Anyway, watch the videos and all that. Anyway, so what I did was I went and started a new, I had a look and we haven't got wheels and tires playlist. So I started a new playlist called wheels and tires and I searched wheels and tires and I added, I think it was nine videos into the playlist. So with a quick search, I could easily find what I needed, but I'm trying to make it even easier for you guys. So the question is, what index or subheading, what playlist, what subject is your favorite and what would you like to see in the playlist in case I haven't got it there? So check to see if there's something there that covers what you're thinking. And if it's not, please put it in the comments and I'll consider that for one of the next playlists that we add there and I'll add the videos in into there to make it easier for you. And all the new videos we've been adding for about the last year, generally we also add them to a playlist. Now, catch can, let's just quickly recap. I think we've got a playlist on catch cans and you should probably watch all that information to help you understand, but I'm gonna quickly go through it again with the latest, my latest skills on explaining how the system works. Now, this is my understanding. This is a 2012 Hilux. We're doing some uh, injector replacement here. Myself and the assistant, we're here together. And I've said in a number of videos here, this is, it's all me, I do everything, I do all the parts, I buy, I sell, I do all the work, I deal with all the customers, I do everything. Well, you know what, things are changing a little bit. I've got someone here that is absolutely awesome, and I wish I could get more people and clone him. Like, I want to clone me, I want to clone him as well. So, very difficult. And so it's changed. So it's not me doing everything, it's us doing everything. And uh, soon enough, it's going to be him doing everything under the bonnet because he does it just the way I want to do it. It's all spot on, Mickey Mouse, like, you know. It's like a dream come true, I've got to tell you. So, um, basically, let's talk about this catch can. Now, the first part about it, I'll just put the light down for a minute. It's actually got a bracket that's, instead of wobbling around, like most of them wobble around a lot, look at this, it's actually got a bracket. That, so, we've got the positives. We're trying to stay positive here, right? So we're, you know, don't worry about the wiring loom that's sitting there, don't worry about it, I'll just get that out of the way. But normally there's, they're wobbling around, so this bracket, whatever, I'm not saying it's a great bracket, and I'm not saying rubbing on everything is good either, and we'll get to that. But it's actually got a bracket that's not wobbling around that might not tear the guard of the vehicle to pieces as quick as some of the other ones. Probably will, if this is on corrugations and that wobbling around half full of oil, that quite a long bracket down to there the leverage it could actually pull on those guards this one over here i reckon would be okay but you need the combination and there's probably needs to be a third leg you know the tripod thing it's like a tripod with one leg missing so anyway catch can what does it do catch can everybody loves catch cans you've got to have a catch can what would i know about catch cans right and of course you know someone else was right about the catch can so we don't give a stuff who was right and who was wrong about a catch can and we don't hate catch cans but I've got to tell you, in life, one of the things I don't like is waste. I don't like, you know, people sort of, I suppose, sharing the wrong information to sell things, to make money, where it's not giving you any benefit for the, for the problem, right? So what's the problem here? Let's have a look at the problem. The problem is the intake system getting caked with carbon and, and build up so that it can't breathe anymore. So that's the problem. So what does the catch can do? So let's just quickly go into the problem. Why is the problem there? Well, you've got, as I said, exhaust gas. See exhaust, there's the manifold there, exhaust. Exhaust gas, what's meant to go out the tailpipe. It's going through the head of the vehicle, through the port, and out into the ejac hall, and then back into the intake. So there's your real problem, exhaust gases. Now, having your crankcase ventilation, this is just a breather, I've explained it before. Think of it like an exhaust fan over your shower, whatever. It's, there's nothing dirty about what's in there. There's nothing, it's all clean in there, right? You can look in there, it's all clean. There's nothing dirty. It's just your engine oil, basically, and some moisture. So moisture from the air, from combustion. Combustion, air has moisture in it, we can agree on that. Air's what's going in your engine, therefore, the moisture's gotta go somewhere. Anyway, so tiny amount of moisture, depending what climate you're in and what 
conditions, short trips, long trips, and all that sort of thing. So it always varies, but it's to take the moisture out because moisture and oil don't mix. It makes a messy mess, right? But in doing so, you get a tiny amount of those oil fumes and whatever. A little bit of oil comes through because there's some gases in there as well. Some of the combustion gases leak, ends up in the crankcase. That's inside the crankcase, for anyone who wants to know. That's inside the engine. See this engine here? You know, down the bottom is the crankcase, but it all sort of comes to the top in the valve cover. It clicks here, and there's like a bit of a catch can inside under that valve cover there. That's exactly what it does. It separates, so you don't get much oil coming out here usually now some people like to over exaggerate and put examples up showing you how much oil whatever if there was a lot of oil there it's using the oil from your sump you'd have a low oil reading which most people don't even have when they leave it overdue at 15,000 k's the oil level's not low so it's not a lot of oil so what does putting a catch can do well it's supposed to take the oil out right and, and catch it in this filter this catch can Right, so where it comes out, instead of coming out of the valve cover, nice and simple, straight to the turbo connection there, right? It's bang, comes over this can, filters it out, and takes the oil out, because the oil is the glue for the soot, right, that sticks on the intake. So the oil is the glue. If you take the oil away, then of course that dry abrasive soot, just like taking an air filter out, see your air filter here? Just take the air filter out, let all the dust go through the engine, right? So by taking the oil out, that will allow not most but all of that dry abrasive soot exhaust gases carbon whatever you want to call it it'll just go straight through your intake and probably not stick because the oil isn't there for the glue it'll just end up black it'll be black your valve clearances your valve seats probably wear down your rings will probably wear a bit because you've got all that going through the engine so it's not a good thing for your engine obviously that's pretty obvious that's not good for your engine and you don't want that i'm pretty sure we can agree on that and putting this catch can in place it does not do anything to reduce the EGR system, exhaust gases over this side, going through your engine. It doesn't do anything. Zero. Absolutely zero. All it does is maybe reduces the oil so that the intake stays clean. But let's go to the bench. Have we got the EGR valves over on the bench now, so it's been removed. We'll have a quick look in the manifold in a minute. This one's a 2012. The EGR was cleaned and possibly the intake. I'm not sure of the full details at around 130 odd thousand k's I'm told by the client and shortly afterwards within a month this catch can was added that's obviously to solve the problem right well let's go and have a look at the EJR valve because it's done about 180,000 k's now so 50,000 k's later without anything changing on the EGR system you know exhaust gases exhaust gas recirculation but with the catch can in place and let's go and see what we have over on the bench we have the EGR assembly right now let's be clear here what we're talking about I'll call this the spacer this is the EGR valve right this is where the crap goes in at that end there and this is what we call the elbow because it's like an elbow it's a bent section like you you know your elbow there's my elbow right so, you know there's a bit of an elbow it's bent right so the elbow that joins the EGR valve to the manifold is down here, it's on the vehicle, right? So let's have a look in there, because you're hanging over looking there, let's see if we can get this light. So how well did it work out, right? 50,000 Ks for this catch can, whatever brand it is, I don't care, you can tell me, oh, you needed this brand, you needed that brand, you needed a different filter. I'll tell you what can happen, filters can block up and there can be problems and it can cause crankcase pressure and many people have experienced that. So they can cause issues, they cost money, the brackets can cause issues on the vehicles, in my opinion, it's an absolute waste of money. You don't need it. It does nothing of any benefit. Therefore, waste of money, waste of space, and there's things in the way costing you more money when we work on the vehicle. Because did you notice the hose was still on the valve cover? We can't get it off. It's You don't need to use a clamp. There wasn't a clamp on the original piece of rubber that pulls off. There's no pressure there. Okay, You don't need to use a clamp. That big, thick heater hose, that's meant to have water in it. Putting that on there, A, it's too small, it's too tight, makes it hard to get off. And then by adding a clamp over the top, completely crushes that rubber and distorts it, and it's just rubbish. So it costs you money to add these things to your vehicle, and it costs you more later down the track when they're in the way and they cause other issues. So it's your choice if you have a catch can. I don't hate them. I don't even really... I kind of... I do hate the big... the greediness and the inconsiderate... These people in these companies and their sole... Um, goal is ma making maximum profits and maximum sales without any consideration to what people really need because people can't afford, or well, some can, um, to waste money 
on things that aren't required or that don't help the situation. So you got a good picture of that, that volcano in there. It's pretty clean, okay? So the catch can has helped the situation. When I say it's helped, it's helped reduce the thick buildup because there's not as much oil in there. But as you can see, there's still enough oil getting through to allow a buildup to start happening. This is 50,000 k's. It's probably going to get worse. You can see down the back of the elbow, there's the volcano. I'll get a photo of that. Right, there it is. We need to just turn that down a little bit. Um, we'll just take a photo of this again and I'll use that in the thumbnail to get your attention because that was pretty good wasn't it okay so what is the solution right let's have a look you want to see more though let's have a look at the other end and a bit more explanation right so this is where it goes in so this is the EGR valve under the right conditions it opens up that little can you see it Hang on. it's really hard to get the picture and take that light out of the picture there you go that might work better all right that little valve that lifts up and opens up Right, it actually slides up the shaft. Let's have a look in here again. Actually, it doesn't even look like it's been moving. Because normally you see a movement mark. Hang on, is that dry you can't see the mark? Yeah, it's been moving. It's hard to see, right? Let me get in there for you so you can see. See, it's been moving somewhat. About halfway that lifts up, right? And that little plunger it just lifts up and that allows all the crap to come in. And that's why there's no crap anywhere in the system before here because the exhaust gas recirculation going in here and then that away is the problem the oil up here you know there's a bit there actually it's quite messy because it's blown back this way as well all that sort of thing right but generally from here forwards not generally always it's just clean and bone dry it's just oil oil isn't the problem that's why the cleaner your oil is the cleaner your intake will be because you've got cleaner oil there's cleaners in the oil and that helps clean everything as well Let's take a look up the other end here. Remember what we always usually say, not, this is not always, I always, always usually, right? Contradictory. What always usually happens now? Well, it's not always if it's usually. So what usually happens, usually, most of the time, is the worst of the restriction is usually there. And as you can see at this end here, it's cleaner, right? You can see this end's cleaner, but there's a bit of, bit of crap. There's not much, right? I'm just showing you around. Right, let's get rid of that light again for a minute. Just have a look in here. Right, you can see there's no build-up. This is nothing to worry about. You haven't got a blocked intake. If you're happy with that and you want to run a catch can, then you run a catch can. doesn't bother me whatsoever. Okay? But if you have problems later, don't tell me that you weren't warned. Okay? It has happened to people. Maybe it's rare. Maybe it was a wrong catch can or it was installed incorrectly or whatever. Can't be that hard. It's just a catch can with two hoses in one end out the other, right? It's pretty straightforward. Um, I have seen catch can installed by reputable workshops upside down, so be very careful where you go and who you let work on your vehicle. Um, let's go back and just have a quick look at the intake manifold and see what that looks like, eh? here it is all right so there's the intake manifold you can have a look again quite clear i'm not sure if that was cleaned i guess it would prop by how clean it is it looks like bloody new so i'd say that was cleaned at the 130,000 k's because i doubt that at 130 um it would be that clean so that's good work excellent excellent stuff how clean that is so the catch can and i hope you like that sideways bit of video there so something different for you i hope that really confused things It'd be interesting to see how it comes out we could edit that but we're not worried about it so the catch can did reduce um enough of that crap so you didn't get a build up but what you've got to understand is it's still going through the engine through the combustion past all your valves and we believe it's the valve seats that are wearing down because we see this pattern with catch cans and that dry abrasive stuff there's a pattern that we've seen and it has continued it's not every vehicle it's a, it's kind of a how do i say it's a general pattern it's not absolute it's not hasn't been uh peer reviewed you know and all that sort of thing so it could be wrong um but the pattern we've seen and i'm not trying to you know i don't need to try and convince you that you know so i could be wrong um but the pattern we've seen where we find tight valve clearances quite often Vehicles have catch cans there and not just from the ones we work on, whether it's injector kits we've supplied and people DIYs and, you know, they go, oh, this one's a bit tight, what do you reckon? And soon, straight away I go, 130Ks or so. I go, mate, I go, has it got a catch can? And they go, yeah, mate, I put it on before I found you. Same old famous words, I hope everyone's having a laugh because I've heard that so many times and I've heard it many times. There's hundreds and thousands of people that are 
yeah, I'll put that on before I found you. So I hope my information's making sense to you. Please press the like button if you like it and it's making sense. It's just genuine, honest advice. And that's how we roll with everything. We get our facts straight, we get our information right, we share it with you, trying to help you so you can save some money and make the right decisions and maybe spend the money on, I don't know, you could get a free ARB compressor instead of a catch can or something like that. Hang on a minute, he's already got the compressor, it's already hidden down under there. So anyway, that's catch cans. I hope you've explained it well now. So hang on, what's the solution? Okay, so if the catch can's not the solution because it reduces the oil, and some people say, oh, isn't having, you know, so there's a flow reduction plate, EGR flow reduction plate, seven mil hole. You know, it goes in down here at the start of the EGR cooler between there and the head. It's in all the other videos, all right? Not telling you whether it's legal or not. Depends what country or state, where you are at and all that, it's up to you. As far as the environment goes, um, overall, I think it's uh, Rob Peter to pay Paul. Um, look, diesels are probably pretty, not pretty, let's say pretty bad, not the best for the environment. Definite diesel particulates either way. Um, but when you consider all the information, which I'm not gonna go in detail in this video, you know, when you put your foot down, that's when the EGR valve closes and you've got full power maximum nitrogen oxides. Therefore, you've got all that happening anyway. It's only when you back off, when you've got making less heat, anyway, whatever, and there's still a hole there and it still flows, so it still works, it still works at idle, you've still got 20% EGR flow, only takes a very small amount of inert gases for it to work, blah, 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 I can go on about it all day, but I hope you understand, watch the EGR playlist, I'll be looking forward to the comments, just reminding you again about what um, subheadings, playlist, index, whatever you want to call it, have a look at those playlists, let me know what else we need, because I may not have thought of it. Um, the solution may be to shut off the EGR system or put a plate in with a 7 mil hole from kon.com.au on eBay, kon 4x4, that may be a solution. Some people have done both and they say, you know, isn't that the best of both worlds? Well, there's been people that have reported and I haven't heard back yet that have got both and they had a build up similar to what we've just shown in the picture there. So all I can imagine is evening up the mix of oil and the soot is leaving a problem where if you've got more oil and no soot or less soot, the oil's keeping it clean, I don't know, because you've seen the photos and the videos of our EGRs that are clean with just the plate. So it does work really well from these vehicles. When I say our vehicles, all our vehicles that we've shown you in videos, clients' vehicles who have you know put the plate in, they get that plate off eBay. It's a bit of a DIY thing. We've got a video, I think, putting the plate in, cleaning this whole EGR system. Quite a detailed video called Full Detail EGR Clean. Check that out. Um, it's up to you if you put the plate in, you can work it out. Like I said, it depends what state you're in. It's a bit of a gray area because you're not stopping the EGR system from working. You're re-engineering it to reduce the flow and it still works. But to a level that doesn't cake up your EGR and it's proven that, you know, the valve clearances are staying good forever without a catch can. All the vehicles we've seen without catch cans and with a plate there from early days. We know a number of people from back around 2014, new vehicles that put the plate in from very low Ks and the valve clearances are as per new specification at 150, 200,000 Ks we've seen so far. So there's the information guys, do with it what you will. Please hit the like button, subscribe, turn the bell on and share the information is what we want to do. Look forward to seeing those comments. Thanks for watching, see ya.